Welcome back to Elite Automation. I'm Malachi Greb, CEO of Elite Automation. Uh, this is our Elite Automation YouTube channel. And today what we're going to do is going into matrix of a UDT or parent-child uh, UDT. So I already did the UDT video and I'm um, doing this video right here. Uh, I actually had another video planned, but you know what? Things came up and I wasn't able to do the other video because uh, we're still waiting on this new processor to come in. And I want to be able to run some live code and, and be able to show you guys code actually working. So therefore, anything that has code in it, I kind of have to wait until that processor comes. Uh, so this, uh, this is kind of like a, a little bit deeper method. It's very, very simple, but it's the same thing as the other UDT thing we just did in the last video. But uh, it's very important to, to know how to do the matrix of a UDT because if you don't know how to do the matrix of a UDT, then you kind of just can't even... Uh, really utilize the UDT the way it really needs to be used because generally when you use a UDT you're not going to just have one singular UDT with uh, with just one data type in it you're gonna have like a branch or what is called a uh, parent child UDT and it may be called different things depending on where you're from and who you hang out with but uh, a lot of times in structured text world that's what you call a parent and a child and we'll dive into that and you'll see a little bit of what that means so let's go ahead and jump into studio 5000 all right so now we're gonna go ahead and jump into our assets here and we're gonna pop open our user defined and you can see I still have a couple of these from our last project so what we'll do is we'll do a new data type and then we'll call this data type Let's just say um, truck. What am I trying to do here? Yeah, truck. Yep. And then we'll just do another one called color. And then we'll have data type called colors. And then we'll do. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into our assets real quick. And as you can see here, there's a few of them from last time. So we'll use that the colors, uh, the motor one. Let's delete that one. Now we can delete it. So let's go with New data type. Doors. We'll go two door. Let's make it a Boolean. Let's go. Four door Boolean. We'll go crew cab Boolean. We'll go other. Now, all this stuff that I'm adding here really doesn't matter. Um, I'm just doing this as arbitrary. I kind of wish I would have done this on an actual example of something, but uh, just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea and also give an idea that's general enough that somebody's not going to start getting confused on the terms because a lot of times you start throwing out stuff that's, uh, you know, industrial lingo uh, or industrial automation lingo, then people start getting confused on the lingo and really don't capture what it is that you're trying to show them. So we're going to go back over to our controller organizer again. Oh, we got to apply this real quick. Apply.
That's right. So there you go. You just seen an error right there. So it don't like to see the, I believe, a number first. So you have to uh, do the number second. You can't start. You can't start the the name of your data type with a, with a number. So we okayed it. We'll come back into our controller organizer again. Um, let's just go with new data type. truck and then we'll call this one color and we'll call it data type colors and then we'll call this one doors data type doors boom apply okay come back into our control organizer again create a new data type We'll call this one car. We'll give this the same property. So it'll be doors. Or not doors. Uh, color. Colors. And then door. Or yeah, door. Doors. We'll apply it. And then let's go create one more. We'll create a couple more actually. We'll call this one SUV. And we'll give it the same thing colors, color, data type colors, then door. Sorry, this right here is a little bit convoluted. Um, you know, I debated on doing some of this structure beforehand and then not showing all of it, but I think there may be some value lost in not, not doing it all as one go. So, new data type. And we'll call it vehicle don't mind if my spelling is not right there I can't spell so let's go car data type car truck data type truck SUV data type SUV and apply okay so I don't know if you noticed that but basically I was utilizing the data types of the, of the ones that we previously created so what I did is the first ones that we were creating was the 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 child and then you'd have the parent then the grandparent I'm not sure if that's exactly how you go about calling it like that, but that's the way I like to call it because it makes more sense. Um, so then what we'll do is we'll jump into our controller tags, and you'll have to ignore all these other controller tags that I have up here from our other projects we have uh, training videos on. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll go in here, we'll call this thing vehicle, and then we'll give it the data type vehicle, and... Now that I did that, I should be able to break this down, and you'll see how it classified things. So notice how you have vehicle. I definitely spelled vehicle wrong. Gosh, damn. All right, whatever. Ignore it. I, I'm like the worst speller there is. I'm the terrible at grammar. I suck at all that. You know, what I do is I do engineering, man. I look at Google if I need to learn how to spell. So um, now we can break this down even further. So we have car. We have the color we can call out, and then boom. There's all the different colors, or let's say first you want to know how many doors it is. And so this is where you can go into some recipe storage stuff, and you can just write a one in this logic, and, and it can store a recipe. Or you can have all these. Uh, what I, So what I would do in the past is I would have this be a recipe value, let's say, for instance, array zero, and that, this is where all your HMI information would go into. 
And so you'd have HMI push buttons and stuff like that linked to this so somebody could set up a, a recipe on an HMI screen. So they set this up, they hit a save button. When they save, hit the save button, it, they move it, it moves that data into another array. And that's def that was the video I was going to actually shoot today was how to like do some indirect addressing and then how to like shift stuff like recipes into uh, other values. So just stay tuned. I'll probably do that as two separate videos just to kind of, you know, make things complicated, I guess. Let me know if you want to do it in two videos, one video, I don't know. So uh, and then, so you have the same structure for all these. So truck will be like this. And, and so you can come in here and you can give these individualized characteristics. Like we can come, notice how truck, there's only two things here. Well, we can come back into this thing. We should be able to, it may make me delete the tag though. Uh, so if we come into truck and then we, uh, we open truck and then we come in here and maybe we want to say, um, bed length. Let's just go ahead and just change this. We could have done this as another dat data type and had bed length and then had maybe multiple different bed sizes in that. Or we can come in here, we can just make this a dent and then it'll just be a value that you can place that, that uh, bed value at. Do you want to change it? Yes, we want to change it. Basically what it was saying is it's going to adjust our array that we'd already created a tag for. Okay, so now we're back into vehicle again, back into our tags. Now watch what happens when we go into truck this time. Now you have your bed length here. And with this bed length, now you can um, now you can put in a value for that, that length there. I should have checked out what's going on here, bro. Now you can put in an actual value for that and uh, and be able to store that information in your recipe. But I basically just was trying to show you guys how you can come in here and keep adding things like now this is not in the cars we only added that to the truck feature so you know you can add stuff does it have a you know for SUV does it have a hatch on the back it does the do, do the door swing uh, vertically or they swing like horizontally um, is it a single door in the back is it two doors in the back you can have all that information whatever it is that whatever type of characteristics you want to store for each individualized vehicle you're able to do that so hopefully that structure kind of made some sense. Uh, let me do uh, one other thing. So let's call this one vehicle. Uh, we'll spell this like crap again. We'll make it match. We'll call it vehicle recipe. Oh man, y'all are gonna kill me for this one because I can't spell recipe either. I have to look it up every time too. I don't know why. So instead of um, so what we're gonna do here is it's gonna be vehicle, but then what we're gonna do is we're going to make an array of it so let's just say 32 I like using numbers like that actually it would have been 31 because zero would be utilized do you want to okay cool okay boom now we can bust out a whole array of this so this zero array would be where I would use my recipes and this other 1 through 32 would be where we store information at. So in here you'll see all these will be identical inside of each one of these arrays. And when I say array, just for those who don't know, it's where this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, those are the different uh, array values. So if you were to call these out by in code, you'd call these out by this value here. Uh, like I said, that's another video though. I'm not going to get any deeper into that, but I just want to show you guys a little bit more of how the UDT structure would work if you break this out into an array and kind of show you guys how powerful it can be. So guys, uh, let me know if there's anything else that you'd like for me to add to this type of video. If there's any like redos you want me to do in this video to like kind of maybe portray some information or if you just know something, some type of other strategy that really works out for you, uh, let me know because I'm just trying to share as much value to everybody as I can and uh, basically bring as much value to the community as possible. And uh, yeah, make sure you smash that thumbs up button if, if this video was helpful because you know, we're all programmers, aren't we? So we got to make sure this algorithm thing's working out, you know, because, you know, yeah. But I'll catch you in the next one, guys. And y'all have a great day. Stay safe.